please consider joining us on our website. You'll have access to Interesting Minds, Rhyme Series, and a tutorial so you can see how I do it. I can't guarantee you'll figure it out, but I will teach you how I see people. Maria Eagle! Mr. Speaker, in his statement he said that he wants to govern for the whole of the country, but in a previous role, the Right Honourable Gentleman has accused my constituents of wallowing in their victim status, yeah. repeated yeah. offensive and yeah. proven untruths yeah. about the cause of the Hillsborough disaster and called yeah. Liverpool self pity city. So yeah. will he now apologise from that yeah. dispatch box to the yeah. people of Liverpool yeah. for the yeah. offence that he's caused? Oh, this should be good. Let's see how this rolls. I will, I, Mr. Speaker, I ask the right honourable lady to look at my political record and look at what we've achieved. As a, as a, look at what I have done as a one nation conservative, as a lifting up, helping with. He is leaning down, but that goes with that nervousness that we keep seeing. It's like every time with him. Maybe it's the culture over there. there there's like an underlying nervousness with him. My partner doesn't have it, but he got attacked unjustly. And he gets and leans in on one arm, which is pretty much just a pillar of strength. It's that underlying nervousness, kind of what it makes you do is you look for a pillar of strength. But on the other side of him, you see that arm come up, fingers are out, giving her really good eye contact and laying into her. Looks pretty strong for Brexit. And he's got some fire in him. With policies that are uniformly, uniformly delivering better outcomes for the, for the poorest need and neediest in society. And that is what I stand for. And that is what I believe in. And that is what this whole government is going to deliver. Does, does my right honourable friend welcome the findings of the Alternative Arrangements Commission, uh, led by me and our right honourable friend, the member for Loughborough? Uh, I, I do, and uh, they are, if I may say, a, a withering retort to the Gloomsters uh, opposite, who say that there is no solution, who begin uh, the uh, prospect of negotiations by saying that de defeat uh, is, is inevitable. That's actually really good, too. So he's got the gentleman behind him that he's speaking to, who's obviously with him on his side, but he's still giving it back to the last lady who gave him lip. Oh, he's a fighter. He's a little scrappy man. It would be nice as soon as he gets into the, the Brexit forum and starts actually interacting with those leaders as a leader, we'll see more and we'll be able to know more. But he's got to overcome the EU already saying they're not going to change the deal. And he's got to overcome the people even in his own party and the other side fighting him all the way there. Poor Boris. Order. Statement. The Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> So you see Corbyn sitting down across from him, Mr. Boris, the prime minister. And uh, Corbyn doesn't even acknowledge him moving. You know, think about humans, people in general. They see movement or somebody that is of leadership or an equal, especially when you're in a room and you're a leader. You watch the other side or acknowledge them in some way, even if you dislike them. The fact that we see Corbyn give him nothing at least on the initial onset, is telling in and of itself. It's very disrespectful and shows just mentally where he's at. It's very childish. It's a very childish mentality. Mr. Speaker, with permission, I shall make a statement on the mission of this new Conservative government. But before I begin, I'm sure the whole House will join me in paying tribute to my right honourable friend, the member for Maidenhead, for all she has given to the service of our nation, from fighting modern slavery to tackling the problems. Now, the setup to this room is actually quite interesting because your allies are behind you and you literally are the leader. You're facing those that in general disagree with you on many issues and at times are your enemies. And then we see Boris giving eye contact. He's not giving great eye contact, but the fact that he's actually looking over there, but he gets relief every time he looks over to the speaker. That's his neutral ground. He can't turn around and face the audience of positive vibes. No, he's got to face the audience of negativity, dislike. So that's why you see him look to the speaker more than you see him look towards the other side. But it does show character strength looking at the other side as much as he does. And our mission is to deliver Brexit on the 31st of October for the purpose of uniting and re-energizing our great United Kingdom and making this country the greatest place on earth. And when I say the greatest place on earth, I'm conscious that some may accuse me of hyperbole. 
but it is useful to imagine the trajectory on which we could now be embarked. By 2050, it is more than possible that the United Kingdom will be the greatest and most prosperous economy in Europe, at the centre of a new network of trade deals, which we have pioneered. So see Rhys Mogg, he's getting comfortable. And I know he has a very large fan base. Body language is body language. He's getting comfortable in a ways that he doesn't have to look the, at the opposition while the speech goes on. Because I think he goes on talking for like 20 minutes. By unleashing the productive power of the whole United Kingdom, not just of London and the South East, but of every corner of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, we will have closed forever the productivity gap and seen to it that no town is left behind ever again, no community ever forgotten. Our children and grandchildren will be living longer, happier and healthier lives. And our kingdom in 2050... We see Corbyn on the other side. It looks like he's following along with the speech and making marks. May have gone off script. It's good to sit there and follow along speech-wise. But you'd think that you'd actually pay attention to the person who's talking to you. Because you're not making it about my genuine concerns. He's got it in a position where the words are the most important. How can I word this to manipulate people? Because they're not paying attention to me. That's the mindset. When you put too much emphasis on words, it becomes easier to manipulate people. Well, he said, yeah, but what's he doing? But he said, but what's his body language say? That's all lost now. Now we're just focused on words. That's why I hate 20 minute monologues. Our constitutional settlement, our United Kingdom will be firm and will be secure. Our union of nations beyond question. Our democracy robust. Our future clean, green, prosperous, united, confident, and ambitious. And that is the prize, and that is our responsibility in this House of Commons. And when you see him bring his hand up, he's done that quite a few times too. He's rallying behind him his troops, gives them the rally, then looks forward, I'm rallying them behind me. To fulfill, and to do so, we must take some immediate steps. And the first is to restore trust in our democracy and fulfill the repeated promises of Parliament to the people by coming out of the European Union and doing so on October the 31st. I and all ministers are committed to leaving on this date, whatever the circumstances, and to do otherwise would cause a catastrophic loss of confidence in our political system. It would leave the British people wondering whether their politicians could ever be trusted again to follow a clear democratic instruction. You see all of them down the road. They're just staring at Boris. They're not giving glances across the way. It shows another mindset there as well. Boris is the leader. He's the new PM. They all look to him. But when it comes to the mindset that they turn as a support system behind him to look back at the opposition, you don't really see too much of it. I would prefer us to leave the EU with a deal. I would much prefer it. I believe that it is possible even at this late stage and I will work flat out to make it happen. But certain things need to be clear. I don't think Javid has much hope for a deal. <laughs> a little frow that he had and then he's searching like, yeah, no. The withdrawal agreement negotiated by my predecessor has been three times rejected by this house. Its terms are unacceptable to this parliament and to this country. And he doesn't agree with that. There's something in there he doesn't agree with because he's not doing a positive or a negative in his head, but something irks him. It's kind of like, I really like vanilla ice cream. And then somebody went and they put chocolate chips in it. It's like, I like the vanilla. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What do you mean the chocolate chips is bad? No country that values its independence and indeed its self-respect could agree to a treaty which signed away our economic independence and self-government as this backstop does. A, a time limit is not enough. If an agreement is to be reached, it must be clearly understood that the way to the deal goes by way of the abolition of the backstop. For our part, we are ready to negotiate in good faith an alternative. And there we see finally Corbyn is looking up, or at least we get to see a shot of him looking up. And what do we see? His hand over his mouth, stroking his beard, playing with his mouth. 
it's another way of being able to hide yourself without actually hiding yourself. You don't know what to do with your hands. You don't really want to be in front of these people because you can see Javid is now looking over at him. He's uncomfortable, very weak, very, very weak. With provisions to ensure that the Irish border issues are dealt with, where they should always have been in the negotiations on the future agreement between the UK and the EU. I do not accept the argument that says these issues can only be solved by all or part of the UK remaining in the customs union or in the single market. The evidence is that other arrangements are perfectly possible. (laughs) That shot was so perfect. (laughs) Every one of them. Well, not all of them, but like a whole mass of them with their fingers over their mouth. Hide, hide, hide. Oh, so weak. So weak. My team and the right on my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union, are ready to meet and talk on this basis to the Commission or other EU colleagues whenever, wherever they are ready to do so. And for our part, we will throw ourselves. That was actually really good. That guy, I don't know who he is, looking in the direction of Boris but gives a really good look over to the other side. And what I mean by that, he didn't slouch. He didn't bow his head down. He didn't try to hide it in the sense of that weakness hide. He's just got his head over there looking at Boris and his eyes look over wide at the other side. It's like, oh, there's a man with strength there. Where has he been? We will begin right away on working to change the tax rules to provide extra incentives to invest in capital and research. We will now be accelerating the talks on those free trade deals and we will prepare an economic package to boost British business and lengthen this country's lead, which seems so bitterly resented by the benches opposite. Lengthen this country's lead. That was some really good eye contact. That was really good. That showed some real strength. Still would love to see how he interacts with the EU during all these negotiations. That would be the biggest, but that was really good. As the number one destination in this continent for overseas investment, a status that is made possible at least partly. I was watching that playthrough and looking at this bench. You've got this woman with the white shirt, black jacket, who's giving good eye contact from her position, not in a growl, just that's her position. And then you've got... Uh, what's this guy? Second one in from the right. He does really well, but it's it's a um, it's not an open stance. He does not have open conversation. He's not a listener, nor is he being respectful. And then you have the three men now down the row who briefly gave eye looks, but they're all looking to try and get away. Weak. And then we've got the other men down here with their arms folded, guarded kind of hiding like a trapped animal in a corner. The other side is about as strong as the other side. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Another little thing on people and how they interact with each other, the back row and how open and loud they are in their body language compared to the rows that get closer and closer to the other side. It's easier to be brave when you're not in the mix of it. <laughs> we will be able to look back on this period this extraordinary period as the beginning of a new golden age for our United Kingdom. And I commend, I commend this future to the House just as much as I commend this statement, Mr Speaker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We see Boris from the other side. So now Corbyn's come up. Boris is giving him eye contact. He's acknowledging the fact that another leader has stood up and has come to the podium to speak. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the right honourable gentleman to his position and I thank him for an advanced copy of his statement. No one underestimates this country, but the country is... That was really good. That was nice to sit there and see (laughs) Boris having a reaction to what he's saying with his body. That shows the strength, the ability to fight and stay in it. Start calling him scrappy. He inherits a country that's been held back by nine years of austerity. 
that hit children and young people the hardest. Their youth centres have closed. Yep. As we watch the two women, because that's what's in our line of sight, they don't. They give the squirrely motions with their eyes when they look across to try and give strength. It's like it rolls and it avoids any eye contact with those across the way and comes right back or down. And they're also not sitting up straight. They're slouched. Although after a 20-minute speech, I can somewhat see why. But if you were enthused with your own leader, then you get that little ump of strength to sit straight up again because you're enthused with your leader. Apparently, we are not. Their school funding cut, college budgets slashed, and with the help of the Liberal Democrats, tuition fees have trebled. Their housing costs are higher than ever. Their jobs are lower paid. Opportunity and freedom have been taken away. Austerity was always a political choice, never an economic necessity. Order. I see the front line of them with their leader, a lot of crossed arms. You see people with those crossed arms like that. They're, they bring them up real high. You can see it real well with the one guy. His arms are up high. Anything outside of his belief system, which is basically how humans operate these days in a belief system, he's not going to let it in. Not even a room for listening or conversation. And when you see a room of people doing that, not allowing conversation, it's a red flag. And why are we always playing on our phones? There's one, two, three, three people playing on phones. One, two, three high-chested arm crossers. The woman in the pink dress directly behind Corbin crossing her arms, but she's hiding. Hers are low and she's tucked in. Why are we, why, look, oh, but they're doing real business. They've got business to do. I thought business was parliament. Aren't you supposed to be listening? His predecessor promised to end austerity, but spectacularly failed to deliver. People do not trust his prime minister. To make the right choices for the majority of people in this country, when he's also promising tax giveaways to the richest and big business, his own party's funders. So can he now indicate when he will set out the detail of the exact funding settlement for our schools, our hard-pressed local authorities, and police so they can start? I'm watching him now for a few minutes. I was like, was he going to say anything of significance? Is he going to do anything? He's just looking left, right, not center, not up, just left, right, left, right, avoiding the opposition completely. That's a sign of a coward. Yes, I say that. That is the sign of a coward. Make UK, say, make UK representing much of manufacturing industry says no deal would be the height of economic lunacy. Companies from Toyota to Asda, have been clear about the dangers of no deal. Is the Prime Minister still guided by his F dot 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 business policy? <laughs> Mr Speaker, those recklessly advocating no deal won't be the ones who lose out. The wealthy elite that funds him and his party will not lose their jobs, see their living standards cut, or face higher food bills. Mr. Speaker, if the Prime Minister has confidence in his plan... We have now discovered the secret of Boris's hair. He pets himself. Once he's decided what it is, he should go back to the people with that plan. Labour will oppose any deal that fails to protect jobs. We will oppose any deal that fails to protect jobs, workers' rights or environmental protections. And if he has the confidence to put that decision back to the people, we would, in those circumstances, campaign to remain. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the office of Mr. Speaker, 
Uh, it'll take as long as it takes. I've got plenty of time. I'm totally untroubled by these matters. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, the Office of Prime Minister requires integrity and honesty. So, so will he correct his claim that Kipper exports from the Isle of Man to the UK are subject to EU regulations? Will he also acknowledge that the $39 billion is now $33 billion due over 30 years and has been legally committed to be paid by his predecessor? This is a phony threat about a fake pot of money made by the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, we also face a climate emergency. I like to see that strength. He, I'm talking about Boris. He's looking at him and he's shaking his head. They give him the negative head shake and smiling. He's like, I'm looking at you. And it does look like Boris's side has much more strength compared to the other side. At least when Corbin is speaking, the emperor wears no clothes. If you like it, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.